So I heard a great quote last night. I forgot what I was even watching. But the quote was, having bad credit in America is like having some of your freedoms taken away. And I thought that was so poignant because I know that there are plenty of people out there that don't have great credit, that had some circumstances that created not great credit, some a total disregard for their credit. But I want to talk about credit and why having negative credit really does take away some of the freedoms that we have in the United States of America. Of course, number one on the list that I am hyper aware of because of being in the real estate industry and the mortgage industry, and that is, is that it prevents you from buying a home now. I'm sure some of you are going, well, you can buy a home without credit and without down payment. Yes, you can. And there's infomercials all the time that are gonna tell you about that. But the fact of the matter is, is that it is not, not easy. easy. Those deals do not exist on a regular basis. And if you do have good credit, it is so easy to qualify with just a little bit down. And I've done a video on down payments and types of loans, so I invite you to watch those. But what's important to know is that the American dream, which is everyone owns a house, back in, who was it, Roosevelt said this, you know, a car in every garage, a chicken in every pot. I'm sorry, it's I'm forgetting my history. But even that, having a car in your garage, you know, you really lose out if you've destroyed your credit or you've let it go bad because you're going to pay that higher interest rate and your payment's going to be higher and you'll have to go places and do things that you just wouldn't be able to walk into a car dealership and say, hey, I want to buy that car and here's my credit report. And sometimes you can get in a car without any money down. But the fact of the matter is, is so many people these days are fighting against this credit environment because employers now are beginning to require that you have good credit because they don't want to hire you if they can see because when you see a credit report and it's got a lot of derogatory information on it what it says to the outside world is there's a disregard for your ability or your desire or willingness to repay loans because that's, at the end of the day, that's what the credit report is about. It shows your repayment history. So if you're not paying for rent, or you're being evicted, or you're not paying for a car and it's been repossessed, or you're not paying for a credit card and it's gone to collection, or you filed bankruptcy, or your house went into foreclosure, all of those things show up. It's like you're an open book. And what happens is, is that you become really in the eyes of a lot of people a second-class citizen and those freedoms that all the people with that good credit have just disappears so I want to share with you a couple of things you can do to begin to help your credit if it's already damaged and if you have no credit you can follow some of these steps as well the very 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 first thing is to begin to build good credit I use the example of light shines through darkness. So imagine your credit report, if it's in a derogatory state, is darkness. And light, just a little bit of light coming in, will begin to open up and take away that darkness. What most people think is they have to pay off all that old derogatory, which in time, it will eventually fall off or it fades away and the light starts to shine. So the very first thing that you can do for yourself is start to begin to establish good, new, good credit. You can do that with a secured credit card. I always recommend go get a secured credit card if you can't get any other type of credit card. Charge on it. A secured credit card is you put money to the creditor, to the credit card company, you give them money. It's like having an ATM card. However, you are actually charging on it and paying it as a credit card because with your um, ATM card, it doesn't establish any credit for you. So what you want to do is take that secured card, charge your groceries, charge your gas, pay it down every month to about $10. Now here's a really important thing about that algorithm for credit. 
for the credit bureaus, and that is they don't want to see a zero balance necessarily. They want to see that you have just a little bit of balance, that you're taking care of it every month, but you're not exceeding 30% of what your allowable limit is. So that's step number one, is get a secured credit card or get a credit card, charge on it and pay it down to within $10 every month, consistently, 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 and it will build credit really fast. Another thing you can do is since you're already paying utilities and rent, Experian has a process where you go onto their website and that link will be in the body here. You can begin to use those items as your good credit so that it will begin to be reported on the credit bureaus. It's called self-reporting. The next thing you can do is if you do have collections and charge-offs, you can make arrangements with the creditors, not 100% of the time and not 100% of them do it, but that if you get them to delete that by you giving them a portion of what is owed, very important, not just pay it off, delete it. So I recommend that you negotiate with them an amount that they will settle for, but that you get in writing before you ever send money, their promise in writing that if you give them that money, they will actually delete that account from your credit. Because what happens is it stays on there for a very long time, up to seven to 10 years, depending on the type of derogatory credit. And even if you pay it off, it still shows paid collection paid charge off. So the bureaus continually feed it into the algorithm. And if you filed bankruptcy or you've had a foreclosure, unfortunately those ones are going to take the longest to be removed from your credit report. But I promise you, if you take that good credit and shine it on the darkness of a foreclosure, a bankruptcy, collections, charge offs, or whatever, the scores will begin to inch up. The more good credit you can establish and have over a 6 to 12 month period, you would be absolutely amazed at how quickly your credit score will go up. So just a little bit about credit scores, those consumer credit reports that you get through, um, what is it, mycredit.com, um, your credit card company, those are consumer credit scores. They are not the same credit scores that the bureaus give to creditors, meaning uh, mortgage companies, banks, credit unions, car dealerships, etc. They are close, and sometimes they're not close. They're a good gauge, but I want to tell you that they're not exact, and they don't represent what your true credit scores are. If you're getting a mortgage, you have three credit scores. You have Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. And when you get a mortgage, it's the middle score that determines where you are. I've shared about this in another video, but I just wanted to go over it again. You can get a loan, an FHA loan, with a credit score as low as 580. You're going to pay out the nose, you're going to have to go through a lot of hoops and jump through things, and you may not always get it just because of the credit score. It also depends on why the credit score is so low. 620 is where you really optimally want to be for minimal credit scores to get an FHA. Most lenders will do it at 620. 640 is the threshold for a conventional loan. So I've talked about those types of loans and check out this video for those. If you really want to get a good interest rate and you don't want to have be penalized for having these lower scores, 700 is where you want to be, 720. And that actually is considered an average credit score or good. What's excellent is up there in the eights. So if you want to strive for something, you want to set a goal and you want to see where your credit is, you can start with Credit Karma or your credit card company. It'll give you a general bar ballpark idea. If you're in the middle to low fives, you have some work to do. If you're in the high fives and you can get to 620, Generally, it's a little easier. 620 to 640, that's way easier because you're really already building momentum. And then from 640 to 700, you just have to be diligent and pay attention to what your balances are, how frequently you're paying, and how many outstanding accounts you have. So if you want to know any more about credit, I'm happy to share all the ins and outs, 
how you can make it better, how you can get that dream house or anything else that you desire in life because you don't need to be having any of your freedoms taken away in the United States of America because it is the land of the free and we want to be as free as possible. There's a link to schedule a Zoom call with me and I'd be happy to share anything or answer any questions that you want. Please stay tuned for the next two videos and as I always say, y'all come back now, you hear?